the sharpest of picks from the sharpest of minds for the NFC on Super Wildcard Weekend. If you haven't already, be sure to go to the Owner's Box YouTube channel. Click down below. Check out the AFC Wildcard betting preview. Fellas, I'm not going to waste any time. Let's get into Bucks and Eagles. The Bucks are eight and a half point favorites at home here against the Eagles. 47 is the total. It did open, uh, I believe, at 49. I did see it yesterday at 49. I did bet this total yesterday at 49. I will not tell you quite yet what exactly that bet was. But how much of an impact does the previous matchup, you know, that came all the way back in week six, Sandy, have on this game? 28-22 bucks. They really had that game in hand from the get-go. Yeah, I think, you know, this playoff matchup, we, we see a similar game to what we saw. Um, back when they first played. I, I like the Eagles in this one, but at this point, you know, I see the total jump down two points. I think you'll talk more about that when you talk about your pick team act there, but I think this is going to be a closer game than everyone thinks. I think that eight and a half spread right now is, is quite large. I know it's a playoff game. All these things you know, come into account here. Bucks, some questionable guys likely to come back, but not for sure yet. There's a lot of up in the air with the Buccaneers right now for me. Um, I think we see a similar game. Like you said, 28, 22. I think it's in that range. I don't think it will be um, outside the spread. I lean Eagles in this one, but I just see this game being closer than everyone thinks. Dave? They kind of beat the brakes off them in the first game. The score doesn't indicate yeah. how that game went. Not so, at all. Um, yeah, I, I, you said it was week six, right? Like, I yeah. remember the Bucs just kind of taking care of it and then letting their foot off the gas a little bit. That's why the score was so close. Different Bucks team, though, uh, now, obviously, with all those issues they've had, some of those guys out. I also lean the Eagles. I don't know if that's a bad thing. But for me, if I'm not really sure which side I'm on, I'll just take the points every time pretty much. So that's kind yeah. of where I'm at with this. Um, I don't, yeah, I, the Bucks team is not as good as they were. I don't remember who, which guys were out and which guys were in for that game, but I don't think they're the same team they were early on this season with those town, obviously Godwin and Brown gone. Yeah. Yeah. And then Fournette, like you said, there's guys that are uh, like on the table to play, but we don't know Fournette obviously being one of them. Um, Shaq Baird and JPP, both the guys, the edge defenders um, and then Levante David up in the air. All these guys are hoping to play. I don't know if they all will, um, I'm kind of surprised you guys are on this because like you said, Avery, the Bucks just kind of sat on their hands the entire second half in that week six game. Jalen Hurts was really bad throwing the football. I think he was under 50% completion percentage, 140 yards. Look, look, the Eagles know their identity. Nick Sirianni has realized what their identity is. It's running the football at the highest rate in the NFL. And you know what the Bucs do? They stop the run. Like nobody wants to run the football against the Bucs. That nine nothing win for the saints over the bucks. They ran the ball 31 times for 61 yards. Imagine running the ball 31 times for less than two yards to carry. Like that's just into a brick wall. So I I'll get to this, the total I'm on the, I was on the under at 49. I'm a little bit worried at 47. Cause of course, 49 is a key number. Um, so I'm definitely leaning on the Bucks side minus eight and a half. I think this thing could get to 10 because I think the difference here is the bucks would be locked in in a playoff game here. This defense is going to, be locked in for four quarters and not give away. Like there was two late touchdowns from the Eagles that made this look way tighter than it really was. Yeah. Oh, I remember because this was when Sirianni went for two down 14 and got inside oh, I remember. that number. I so. remember I was on that Eagles game. I remember <laughs> that was a blowout by the way, but one thing I'll compare this to, like if you're going to take um, the Buccaneers in this spot at this number, you're going to take it now. Like this is similar to the Steelers. What I was saying with the Steelers chiefs game as well, like that chiefs mm -hmm. number will likely get higher than 12 and a half. I'm assuming by kickoff, like this is something similar with this game where I see a lot of people jumping on the bucks. I think it's just over 60% of um, tickets are on the, on the bucks minus eight and a half in this one. Obviously that will likely get higher as we get closer to kickoff. But if you're going to take the bucks, um, I definitely don't blame anyone for taking the box at minus eight yeah. and a half of this number. It, it's a good number. Um, I can see them winning by 10, but again, I think, you know, if you're going to bet the Eagles wait a bit, like that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to be waiting a bit. So if it gets around it, if it gets to nine and a half, 10, guess the 10, I'm taking uh, Eagles plus 10 in this number. I mean, it's, it's a playoff game. I see it within that number, but again, if you're going to get the box, you got to go now, in my opinion. Yeah. I feel, I feel silly. Cause I'm, I'm a guy that likes to find, like some good narratives here. And I didn't hit, hit people with that in the last video, but I do believe in the last few years, five, five years, maybe something. I think that's around the number um, underdogs on wildcard weekend feasts. They're hitting at 64%. So yeah, the dogs could be, you could just be blindly betting the dogs and find some success. Uh, all right, let's move to Cowboys 
49ers. Cowboys, of course, hosting the 49ers at three point favorites as winners of the NFC beast. Uh, this is the biggest total of the weekend, 50 and a half points. I think a lot of people might be surprised to see that this is the largest total of the weekend. Um, but I don't really think I am because um, I think the, you know, this is a perfect scenario uh, for the 49ers to be able to run the football on, uh, on Dallas. What do you guys think? I mean, I'd agree. The 49ers are very, very good at running the football, right? They're kind of like the Eagles in that way, but Debo, they get him the ball a lot wherever he is on the field and Dallas can give up big plays. Michael Parsons really good at rushing the passer, but you see some of those guys giving up the big plays um, like Diggs. They said one of the best seasons of all time, but also giving up a shit ton of yards through the air yeah. as well. Um, I think they can run the ball well, but I am a big Dallas fan for some reason right now. I think so they can, I. I think they can go to the Super Bowl. I love them in this spot. Only three points. I'm going to hammer it. Um, they had, this is like a big rivalry back in the day. I'm pretty sure people saying like, Oh, I didn't fucking remember that. I wasn't around when I knew this was yeah. a big rivalry. So it'd be a fun game for people to watch and bring them back a little bit. Yeah. Like from my standpoint, Avery, I'm with you on the Cowboys in this one. I like the Cowboys at three. Um, you know, right now it's pretty split on the spread. It's like 50, it's close to 50, 50 in terms of tickets on the spread here um, between the 49ers and Cowboys. But I do like, Cowboys minus three if it's six on that number. Anything three and a half or above, I'm a little more hesitant. I wouldn't say I'm hammering this. I'll probably toss a unit on minus three here. Um, but on the total, like I, I like the over personally. I'm not, I'm not huge on it, but I lean over for sure. Um, I just think these teams, like as you said, digs like over a thousand yards in, you know, in coverage this year. He's, that's number one, like worst in the league in terms of you know when he's covering receivers. So you know, I, I like. Do you know what he ahead. gives up per reception? It is by far the worst in the NFL. Per reception, he gives up 18 and a half yards. The dude Insane. is terrible. He he just the interceptions are disguised in one of the worst cornerback seasons I can remember, and maybe in history. Probably it in this modern day NFL has to be. Yeah, it brings that debate. Like turnovers are like game change, like game changing plays. Like that's what exactly. they're gonna argue. Yeah. Like that's that's the argument there. Like, yeah. yeah, I'll take a guy that will, you know, be a little riskier, jump some routes, you know, go for the interception and obviously give up bigger plays in, in those instances. It's worked out for the Cowboys, obviously, with their record and how they've been playing this year. But in these playoff games, right, T Mac, I think you're gonna see, you know, he'll give up a big play or two and it's gonna cost them. Like it they they can't you know, it's a different mentality in the playoffs. Everything's different. It's not regular season. Every play matters. Every down matters. And I think this is where we'll see Diggs giving up some big plays. But again, at that minus three number, I do like the Cowboys at home here. Like these guys are a super, like they're plus 1200. Avery gave that play out yesterday, or I think on Monday on our long form, like for a Super Bowl winner, I think the Cowboys can go pretty far. And as I said, I'm a little more worried as a Packers fan about the Cowboys than I am about the Buccaneers. Um, ultimately, but I know that there's not technically a path for them to play. But anyways, mm-hmm. I like the uh, over 51 in this um, for sure. So okay. and if you're going to if you're going to like the Niners in this one, running the ball travels, running the ball plays in the playoffs, too. Right. If you can do that, you should have no problems. All right, fellas. This is the game that I've been the most excited about for my research. Um, and I I like what you're saying with the over Sandy. I don't really like what you guys are saying with the Cowboys. I'm going to be looking down a bit because I want to make sure I get all these numbers. The Cowboys are the number one offense in the NFL, right? They're averaging, I believe 30. What do I have here? 31.2 points per game, 407 yards per game. So of course, very explosive offense 49ers. They put a lot of faith in their front four, especially Nick Bosa. They, they don't blitz at a high level, but they do get after the quarterback. Um, so if they're, they blitz, I think at the sixth lowest rate in the NFL. So they're also going against the Cowboys offensive line. That's really, really, really good. I think they're third in sack rate this season, maybe six in sack rate. So if they're not getting pressure with the front four and they're not blitzing, Dak Prescott is the best quarterback in the NFL uh, uh, without the blitz, like just, just a regular rush. And then on the other side of the ball, I think, I think the 49ers are going to have their way on the ground. And when they don't, if, if they mix in, when they mix in the play action, Jimmy Garoppolo has been the best quarterback in the NFL in play action. He has a 73% completion percentage and a 10.2 yards per attempt. Nobody is at that number. Nobody is as good as him. And I just mentioned this Trayvon Diggs. If this Cowboys team is getting beat up on the ground and they start bringing guys into the box and they're asking Trayvon Diggs to cover Debo Samuel or even Brandon Ayuk or fuck even Jawan Jennings. I don't think he's going to be able to handle it. I think he's going to get beat over the top and there'll be some big plays. So I really like the over because of that. I think both these teams will be successful. And then on the, uh, as well, another thing that has me just pushing over to the 49ers side and even grabbing their money line, but definitely plus three, the Cowboys are the worst team in the NFL 
in rushing success rate defensively inside the red zone. And the 49ers are the number one red zone offense in the NFL. They score touchdown on 66.7% of their drives inside the red zone. I really like the 49ers in this spot. And I really like hitting Elijah Mitchell plus 120 to score a touchdown. I, T Mac, you, you literally, I, as I said, I'm on the Cowboys, but I, this is going to take you another point. I love Elijah Mitchell, especially in the owner's box this week. He's yes. pretty low. Like, I was actually shocked. I, our, our team does a great job setting salaries, but they missed on Elijah Mitchell. Like, I have him as a top two back this week against this Cowboys defense. His mm. price, um, let me pull it up for a second. I think yeah, this was it was shocking. His price is 5,900, and there's like seven yeah. or eight running backs on owner's box right now higher than him. I just don't see how that's possible. There's literally six, like, it doesn't make any sense. So, if you're playing owner's box this week, Elijah Mitchell has to be in your lineup. Like, absolutely. I could see him having a huge week. That said, that leans to my over narrative, kind of goes against my Cowboys narrative. But again, I think, as you said, Cowboys averaging 31 plus points a game this yeah. year. I think that's where the over becomes even more like I'm becoming more confident as we go through the numbers here about the over. Um, mm-hmm. But again, Cowboys, it's going to be a game where I see the 49ers hanging in there. I just think the Cowboys can hit that minus three number uh, pretty confidently. Yeah. Like I mentioned, like the, the, the strength of the 49ers defense is in their front seven. It's it's Fred Warner. It's Nick Bosa. Their, their secondary isn't great. So I think Dak still should be able to move the ball. Like, I don't think, you know, I don't think the, uh, the Niners are a slam dunk home run. But I, I do think that I like them plus the points, and I really like the over, and then I really like Debo as well. So, yeah. um, okay, let's move to Monday night. I'm not a fan of this. I don't really make sense of playing a Monday night game. I don't think we need it. I don't think my girlfriend needs to be, me to have another day where I'm watching football. She's <laughs> she's already so close to the season being over. She doesn't. We, we already lost college football. She doesn't need another day at it. Um, the Rams at home, or sorry, yes, the Rams are at home. My bad. Rams yes. at home, yeah. Yeah, Rams are at home because the Cardinals lost. Um, so they could play most likely two of their four, potential four playoff games at SoFi with the Super Bowl being at SoFi. They are four point favorites. Uh, this total is close to that 50 and a half with the Niners and Cowboys. It's at 49 and a half. Haven't seen too much movement in terms of the uh, the numbers in this game. But what are our first impressions here in a game that's obviously the third time these two teams have met uh, this season? Love the Cardinals. I. I don't know what it is. Matt Stafford never won a playoff game. This is a narrative game for me personally. Can't win in the playoffs. Obviously, Detroit is a whole different team, but I'll ride it as long as I can. <laughs> so side. let me, this is how I see it. I see it as McVay definitely like loves Matt Stafford. He's probably been pining for him for years he, there. But the thing is with, with Arizona is that the run is where you can beat them. So I want to see McVay be disciplined in running the football in this game because Sandy mentioned this on the long form, like the, the constant deep ball mistakes from, from Stafford are just, I just can't make sense of them. And and this is a pretty good Cardinals team in the secondary. So I I really want to see the Rams run the football. Yeah. Like for me, Avery, go ahead. If you haven't finished your point, they're 25th in the league and running the football too. So it's like, they haven't, they haven't done that this year. Yeah. Yeah. I can't see them doing it now. I mean, obviously cam makers out the whole year. So that would obviously weigh into that. But again, I just think, I've been on the Matt Stafford interception narrative. I watched Matt Stafford for damn near a decade up in, when I was watching him in, in uh, Detroit against the Packers. I watched him every year. The guy throws interceptions too often, key interceptions that are going to kill his team. I do think, though, that the Cardinals team, they've lost, you know, Hopkins, right? Is he? Be- he's not back, right? He's done for the year. Yeah, I don't think he's going to play this week. They, like, they're hoping he can come back. I don't think he's going to play this week. Yeah, I don't think he's going to play this week. And I think that, like, the receivers, he's a Christian Kirk going to have to step up. I just don't see, like, at home, especially the Rams, like, they're going to play well. I really think this minus four number is a smash for me. Um, I already have a unit on the Rams minus four. I, I'm likely going to put more. I just don't think, like, right now, the majority of the tickets from a spread perspective are on Arizona at plus four. I think it's 60-40 split um, on the site I'm looking at right now. But it's going to be even. I think it's going to be a pretty evenly bet game, even up until kickoff. But I yeah. lean the Rams here. I got my unit on it. I'll, I'll wait and see the movement and see what you know happens over the week with injuries and everything. But right now I'm on the Rams minus four. Yeah, I think that this is this is probably the toughest game for me to to kind of handicap. I really I, I want to go with an under just with this being a divisional still a divisional game, but I got burned with the under last week with, with the Rams and 49ers game. I love that under that one didn't hit. I, I know a lot of us are down on the Cardinals, but they've been a really good road team. I, I think they're the best road team in the NFL this year. If I'm, if I'm not mistaken, I don't think they've done very well at home at all this year. So they might be happy to be playing on the road that 
this team's definitely going in the wrong direction for, for Arizona. Um, so I do want to back the Rams because I think they're going to be able to run the ball. And I, I just, I feel like McVay is going to be in the bag for this game. I don't, I don't have a lot in terms of yeah. you know the analytical side of this. Well, I just want to go on the record because I actually have been betting on the Cardinals. I had a win total future on them over nine this year. And I've been betting. I beat, I had a, I hit a money line against the Cowboys when they went out. Right. And spread. Like I actually like this Cardinals team and I have been betting them, but yeah, I don't know, man, something about the Rams at home, McVay, you know, he's going to be scheming up. Like I just like, it's for me, it's just McVay and the scheme he's going to have with that offense. I think if Stafford can keep the ball under control, limit the turnovers, that's going to be the key to, to covering the spread for me. Outside of that, I think the Rams come to play. I think Cooper Cup has an insane game. Like first game, like he's been he's been playing well every week. Like he's got to keep it in the playoffs. I think he just you know keeps firing and we'll see. But at minus four, I, I think it could be like a two touchdown win for the Rams, in my opinion. Yeah. Yeah. Take take some of this info we're giving giving you for these games on Sunday and Monday. Make sure to go check out the owner's box, Superflex salary cap contest for wildcard weekend. Promo code Drew9, you get a $10 free entry into any one of the contests we have this week. Look, the boys love Elijah Mitchell. I don't know what Avery thinks, yeah. but me and Sandy, I love Elijah Mitchell this week. He'll Absolutely. definitely be in the lineups. Uh, let us know what you guys are betting this week. Let us know what you think of our bets. Drop a comment down below. Like the video if you enjoyed. We'll, of course, be back next week with our long form stuff. And then as well, uh, we'll see what happens here. And we'll be ready for uh, the divisional round as well. Best of luck, fellas. Let's do it.